Hello, hello everyone. We're back here on a Wednesday. Great to see everybody. I can't believe how fast the week just flies by and we get to be back here together chatting. Um, I'm so excited to get to chat with you today. Hi, Elaine. Great to see you. Um, as you guys start coming in, go ahead and say hello. Uh, we always love getting to see you and chat with you. So we do have the chat open. So go ahead and say hello. Um, I have a special guest today that I'm excited to share with you. We'll get to her in just a minute. But I wanted to remind you, now I don't know what I did with it, that's okay. Um, right now we have two really great, three really great promotions going on. We have 40% off of ball winders. So if you've needed a ball winder, you can go grab those now for 40% off. Um, they're really great if you're working in Hanks, like our Heatherly yarn here, um, to be able to wind this up into something usable. Or even if you're not using a hank and you're just using a skein or a ball, you can go ahead and as you kind of use some of it, especially if you pull from the middle, it'll get kind of floppy. You can go ahead and put this into a cake with your ball winder to go ahead and save it and make it a little easier to organize. Good morning, Chris. Great to see you as well. Hi, Sandra I'm from Northern Alberta. Very nice. Um, hopefully you guys are all having a great day. We're so excited to have you here. Um, so a lot Along with the ball winder sale, we also have our swish sale, which is finishing up today. Today is the last day you can get swish 20% uh, off. And if you're over on the website or in our emails, you will see that you can get an extra 10% off today on top of those 20% off prices. So go ahead and grab that. If you're not interested in Swish, we also have our Brava promotion running where if you put buy three of them, you'll get 25% off. Just make sure to use that promo code uh, that's over on the homepage so that you can get your discount. So um, good morning or good day, everyone um, from Yarn Elf. It's great to see you as well. Okay, so let's jump into my wonderful, wonderful guest. Um, so if you haven't noticed already, we've been doing this great little thing called our Designer Spotlight. And every month we have a featured designer that we are sharing with you, um, somebody that we really love. We love their designs. We love their aesthetic. We just love working with them um, overall. And we want to make sure that we're sharing them with you so that you're learning about new designers as well. And so today we are continuing with our August designer feature. I know we're here at the end of the month, but this is the date that we could make work. So we still get to chat and have fun and everything else you probably saw in some of our emails as well. Um, but so we have our August designer spotlight, which is Brenda Anderson. If you don't know Brenda, you're going to want to sit back and you're going to enjoy this conversation and you're going to learn a lot and you're going to find a new designer to fall in love with. So let me bring her in here and we will get chatting. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Caitlin. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited. Um, sorry, I'm just reading a comment about somebody grabbing Swish today to make the electric jumper by Cassie Ward. I've never heard of that pattern. I'm going to have to go check it out. Um, but I love it. I love when people are grabbing Swish. Okay, so I know typically we go into like, how'd you get started and everything else, but I'm going to switch it up today. Let's talk about your brand new pattern because it's in Swish. And so if people want to go take advantage of that sale, I want to make sure they know all about the pattern. So why don't you tell us about your new pattern that you just put out for us? Okay, well, I'm going to show you guys first. Here is, let me back it up there. Woo! So this is a little hat. Well, it's really any size hat. It goes from child to a larger adult size. Um, and it's made in three colors, you can see here. And, it, you know, at first glance, it might look like you're using two colors and a round, but you're secretly not. You're just crocheting along with the next color, and then you make your stitches down further to make those um, lines go down um, to make the scallops. So it's a, a little easier than it looks, kind of a tricky pattern like that. I like designing things like that. But it is, of course, made in swish, which I love because it's got such a nice, well, first of all, I'm just a really tactile person. And so I just love how it feels in my hands just that much. I just like to pick it up and start using it on whatever. But I um, I love how it has stitch definition, like you can see on the ribbing. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. On the ribbing, how it makes those nice little columns and stands out. So, And it also has such good drape. I mean, it's you know, sometimes you make a crocheted hat and you got to do a lot of blocking to make it hang the way you want it to hang. But this yeah. stuff, it's just like, I mean, even before you block it, it just looks nice. 
yeah, I definitely love Swish. It, it's a really great yarn. Um, it's one of our go-to. Um, we're going to put that link to that pattern. It's called the Bloom Beanie. We'll put that in the chat so you guys can go check it out as well if you're interested. Um, it's a pattern over on our site, and it uses our Swish Worsted, which is currently on sale. It's 100% fine superwash merino wool. It's always a tongue twister, um, but it's a really great amount of yarn. You get 110 yards per 50 gram ball. Uh, so go ahead and grab it. You'll need the three colors. She made her own pom-pom. Mm -hmm. Brenda likes to do that, which we I always do. Love. I love pom-poms. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of texture and how much you love texture, I do want to call out that if you saw this issue of the We Crochet magazine, the cover, guess who made this? That's <laughs> She does a phenomenal job with textures. And so this is all a, let me see if I can get it, all a cabled pullover um, here. So you can grab, this is issue number nine if you want it, or you can go ahead and grab it on the website. And uh, yeah, we love that one so much. It was I so actually great. have it here too. Yay. <laughs> so here, I'm going to make you bigger for just a second. Up close. Yeah. <laughs> so look at how beautiful they are. I mean, the crossing cables, and that's all crochet like no denning no tunisian no anything else it is all crochet it is so so awesome we love it so much while we're gushing on brenda first of all we'll go ahead and we'll throw her link in there for our designer spotlight she has so many patterns that she has made for us so far that we absolutely love um if you can't tell brenda is like a favorite designer of ours <laughs> slash mine um every time i need something Brenda, I kind of need something. <laughs> and, and I'm so happy to do it because you guys are awesome. And I just, I absolutely love your yarns. I love them all. <laughs> yeah. So we love Brenda. Um, I know, I think I saw it behind you. Um, she also did Otto the Otter yeah, for our sure. Amagroom collection. There he is. Um, so she is also very pl prolific with her amigurumi skills and just the different ways that she puts things together. We love that guy so much. He is so cute. He makes a big splash <laughs> of <laughs> all of the patterns. We love him so much. Um, and I do want to call out something really unique that Brenda had started for us is this beautiful cardigan. It is steeped, crochet steaking. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was crazy when she sent this in. It was like, yeah, I'm going to steep this. I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, what? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> it's not as hard as it sounds. Yeah. It sounds scary because it, yes. I, honestly, I've never, I haven't seen any other crocheted steep things before. Maybe they're out there, but I did a lot of searching before I designed that because I thought, well, people must be doing this. It's not that different from knitting, really. Yeah. Um, and so, but I didn't find anything. I didn't find any information on it. And I was like, well, we got to do this. Crocheters can steak too. <laughs> yeah. And so this is issue seven. And if you look in issue seven, <clears throat> let me see if I can find it quick. Probably not. There's a whole article in here about how to do the steaking. So she walks you through it step by step, showing you everything. And I will say you inspired Sarah Dudek. She just made a sweater um, that she steaked and put a zipper into it. Awesome. And she was like, the only way I could have done this is because of Brenda and her Aww. awesome material. And I know of another designer who's working on a steaked project too because of your inspiration. Aww, so, so awesome. Coming, guys, you can steak crochet. Um, <laughs> yeah. But so again, this is issue seven. If you're interested in the dandelion cardigan and learning about steaking crochet. So it's a full tutorial step-by-step -step, with photos. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, good morning, Joy. You're not late. It's okay. Happy to see you. Um, Jean says, good to see you both today. Have a great week and weekend. Uh, Ashley says, I bought that magazine just for that pattern. Well, Aww. thank you. Brenda's patterns always make it, you know, extra special for us. We love getting to work with her. Um, and Shirley is here from Buffalo, New York. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, okay. So now let's go in reverse order. Let's talk about you. So for those who don't know, maybe we could talk a little bit about how you got started in crochet. And I think that kind of ties into too, what you were doing before crochet, because mm -hmm. it kind of all ties together. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Okay. So I first learned how to crochet when I was little. My mom taught me when I was probably like four or five, six, somewhere in, well, probably like more like four or five. Um, and then I crocheted for a while when I was a kid. And then um, I made all the outfits I could for my Cabbage Patch Kids. And then I just stopped for some reason. I don't know. 
I think mostly because at that point in my life, I started sewing clothes for myself. Um, so I was way into sewing for a very long time and I ended up, and this is where we fast forward to my adulthood, I got a job working in a costume shop creating mascots and full body costumes, which you can see my couch behind me and really everywhere in my house just has, I have so many stuffed animals now because I'm obsessed with making creatures. I mean, I did that at my day job every day um, up until, really up until COVID started and then um, our job disappeared because we were making um, full body costumes for live touring shows. And of course we couldn't have live touring shows in arenas anymore for a long time. Right. Um, so they are back, uh, and they have relocated their costume shop to Las Vegas. So I'm, I'm not going to be moving there. <laughs> so instead I, um, started working as a managing editor over at the creative crochet corner where I teach, uh, crocheting. So I'm making videos there. So that's mostly what I'm doing now. Awesome. So how did you get that designer bug? I mean, so, you know, you were making your own clothing, sewing your own clothing and everything else. Is that kind of where you started saying, oh, I could do my own crocheting? Or how did you start crocheting in that process? I think so. I mean, I have always, ever since I was little, I've always been more prone to making it up myself instead of learning how somebody else did it. And then like, I'll look at other people's work for examples. And I've always been like that. Um, but then for some reason, I just always want to make my make it my own way, make my own version of it or make my own pattern my own way. Um, I probably just because it's easier for me to do it that way instead of following somebody else's directions. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like one of those people who has a hard time concentrating on all. I, I don't know. It was just yeah. easier for me to make it up. But yeah, I transitioned into. Well, so then at some point when I was in my early adulthood, I I realized, oh, you know what? I want to learn how to knit. Like some of my friends were knitting. And so I asked my mom who knows all the crafts. I was like, mom, teach me how to knit. Okay. Cause I, I, you know, I kind of remember how to crochet. Um, but I want to, I want to learn knitting. And so I did that for a while. And then, but I just kept wanting to go back to crochet. Like it was easier for me to visualize how to make the things in crochet. Right. And I just, I don't know. So eventually I was like, you know what? I'm going to start just making my own designs for crochet and seeing how that works out, you know? And then I realized at that time there wasn't, you know, that was, I don't know, over 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe now, I don't know, long time ago. Um, and there just wasn't as much out there for crochet as there is now. I mean, there's so much amazing inspirational stuff all over the internet now for, for crochet, but back then it wasn't like that. So it right. was, you know, a lot of trial and error, but uh, luckily for me, I'm a very experimental person. And I like to just, I, I get an idea in my head. I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. Or someone will say something <laughs> like, oh, I don't, I don't crochet socks because they don't stretch. And I'm like, what? Okay. We're going to figure out how to do that. We're going to make super stretchy, even stretchier than knitting crochet yeah. socks. Like it just makes me, it just fuels me with the uh, creative energy to prove people wrong, I guess. Yeah. I well, I like it over in the comments, Dawn is saying, I've never seen that technique in crochet, speaking about steaking. And then Carrie chimes in that you're the crochet rebel. And I just think that's so funny, <laughs> uh, which is so great. But that's it. It takes people who are adventurous to kind of try those new things, to see a challenge or to see, oh, well, we do it in knitting, but you can't do it in crochet. It just yeah, doesn't that, those work. words just right now when you said that, it just made me, I was just like, what? I mean, I know it's you're saying true. that. <laughs> it is not true anymore. There are so many different ways around it now. We've learned so many new stitches, so many new techniques, mm -hmm. and there are really still new things to be learning and to making in crochet and finding, like the way you put your hook somewhere or the way you yarn over or how many times and how many loops. It all makes this really great combination uh, that we can do. Yeah. Oh, I have to share true. this. Um, Cindy said, Brenda, you are such an amazing instructor. I followed some of your videos. So yay. Oh, um, thank you, Cindy. Yeah. One of the great things I will share about Brenda when it comes to designing and helping us on our side is she's always like, well, do you want a full tutorial on this? I can help you explain all this. We're like, yeah, let's go for it. And that's how we got the tutorial for the steaking. Uh, so yeah, you guys can all learn along. So that's always so exciting. Um, okay. So we talked about that you like texture. We talked about how you were in the costume and you like all your animals and creatures behind you. 
would you say that's your favorite thing to design? I mean, you've done a lot of garments and hats for us that have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, so what do you kind of go to? What's your oh, favorite thing if you it, have freedom? It's such a hard question. And I, I struggled with this at the beginning of my designing career because I felt like I needed to choose something to make it my thing. Right. Because but I felt pulled in all these different directions because I'm so, I like to explore and I like to try out new things. So, I mean, obviously there is the, the critter side of me. I really like making cute things out of yarn. It's so gratifying when you make a thing and then somebody just wants to hug what you made. I mean, yeah. it used to be balls of yarn and now you're hugging it. I mean, it's fun. But right. then there's the part of me who likes to figure out new ways to do things, different ways to crochet things, different make up new stitch combinations, make up new cable mm -hmm. thing. I mean, there's, a, I, I really, I don't, <laughs> there isn't really one thing, but I do, I have noticed though, although I have been doing garments uh, more lately than I have been before, I still gravitate towards smaller projects in general, mm -hmm. because I think it's because my attention span, it's like, I want to, I want to learn something. I want to figure it out. But I don't want to be spending a lot of time going back and forth with the same stitch. Right. Um, I know, like, I know lots of people who that is what they absolutely love doing. It's like meditative and it's something that is really relaxing to them. And I understand mm -hmm. that part of it. And for me, when I'm knitting, like, you know, in garter stitch or stockinette or something like that, a big chunky scarf, I f have that same feeling, you know, of mm -hmm. like, well, this is so relaxing, you know. But when I'm crocheting stuff, I'm always just wanting to like figure out the next thing. I, yeah. My mind, like while I'm working on, I mean, at any one time, I have like at least four projects going on in various stages. <laughs> and I'm thinking about the next five while I'm making the ones I'm making, you know, yeah. like I'm just so excited to try new things and so excited to learn. And so I think for me, making the smaller things, it's like I figured a thing out when I made the smaller thing and I can move on and figure a new thing out with that other smaller yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> well, I can I can totally understand that. Um, I love to make garments right now. Like, I don't know, somehow I'm just on this big garment kick. But at the same time, I'm like you, I have like five of them started. <laughs> just after a while, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of bored with this. Let's learn something new. And then I'll come back to this one and I'll yeah. do it, you know, because I get that. Like, it's always fun to be learning a new stitch. Some people like to just sit and power through, uh, but blankets like are hard for me because mm -hmm. it is so repetitive, unless it's a blanket that, you know, you're switching all the time, the textures and colors and things like that. So yeah. mm -hmm. um, Carrie says a big project is coming when you are stressed. That could be yeah. true. Depending oh, on what true. it is, you know, hopefully it's an easier stitch than something you got to try to figure out because uh -huh. it can be a little frustrating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And I actually do have, I am working on an Afghan that's been passed down to me um, by that somebody else had started. And that is my project that I work on when I am just watching TV and I need to get my brain a rest. And I do, you know. But that is very slow going, I have to say. I've had it for a long time. <laughs> I've gotten very far because my brain wanders and I want to try a new thing. So, and well, and too, like I finished, um, well, finished, I use that very loosely. I finished stitching <laughs> uh -huh. a tank top for myself, but the two pieces are sitting downstairs in a bag waiting to be stitched together so I can actually wear it. And I'm yeah. like, seriously, this would take me all of 20 minutes to finish. But like, I can't, like, I'm just like, okay, what's the next thing? Like, I yeah, I think, I I think a lot of people are like that. They don't really particularly like the finishing part of right. the project. And for me, like, I don't really mind it for some reason. I, I think it's because I'm a sewer, like, also. Right. Um, so the putting things together and finally blocking it like that part of it's still fun for me for some reason. I don't yeah. know. I'm kind of weird. Now I used to never block things ever, like never, ever. I mean, I was sending projects into magazines. Nobody ever said anything and they look fine to me, but like eventually I started blocking stuff and I was like, Oh, <laughs> I've been doing this for the last 10 years. Whoops. Yes. Blocking is important, especially yeah. depending on what kind of yarn you're using mm -hmm. uh, to really open up the stitches. Uh, so yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so you, know, you said that we crochet is one of your favorite yarns, which we're so happy about. So what would you say is your favorite one though? If you had to pick one or we'll let you go with two, what is kind of the go-to lately that you've I, been reaching for? I really, really, really like Swish. I mean, I mean, I like them all, but 
I think Swish will always be my like my favorite, probably. And Wool of the Andes. I really just like the I don't know. It just depends on what I'm making. But a lot of the toys that I make and a lot of like when I make mittens and slippers and things like that, I always want to use Wool of the Andes. But but yeah, the Swish, I, I just love the stitch definition. I love that you can make really awesome color work stuff with it. Most people don't really think about using that necessarily for color work, but I just like the way it has just that tiny bit of a sheen to it, just like a little bit, but it's not like shiny, shiny. Right. And then you can make cables with it and they look awesome. They look so perfect and beautiful in that yarn. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of my go-to. Swish is my go-to. Um, yeah, I would say that's my go-to, but I also, because I make a lot of toys too, besides Will of the Andes, I really like Brava. I mean, that's like one mm -hmm. of my favorite acrylic yarns to use that's out there because it, I like the colors and it, it just feels, like I said before, I'm very tactile and I, it doesn't, the acrylicness of it, it feels good in my hands. Like, right. It's definitely a softer, but it's not like super soft, super shiny that it, yeah. you know, it falls apart. Um, yeah. I definitely love Brava too, because of like you were saying the colors, but so it's regular Brava, it's Brava Sport, it's Brava uh -huh. Bulky, Brava Stripes, Brava Speckle, Brava Tweed. I love the Brava Tweed too. I got them all. <laughs> I love, yeah, <laughs> I think so. But I do, I love them all. But yeah. yeah, you know what you're going to get, but you have so many different options mm -hmm. in there. And I definitely love it. And like you're saying, Swish. So I had never tried Swish before because I don't really know why. And now I've tried it and I have fallen in love. I love yeah. the Swish. Today. I will search out patterns that have it in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just It really is a great yarn and a step up. And I know people say like, oh, it's, it's wool, but it doesn't feel. No, it's so like, soft. Like, it's, it's so, so soft, soft and it's so much great. <laughs> I know. I know exactly. And then the other thing that I really like about it is I, I gift a lot of my things to people. And because, you know, when you gift something, you can't be like, you know, here's this, wash it this certain way. I will be checking up on you to make sure you don't wreck this project. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, when you gift it, you give it away and you're like, you know, PS, this is how you should take care of it. And then you just hope they take care of it the way you're supposed to. But with Swish, you don't have to worry about it because you, they can right. throw it in the wash if they want to, you know, every, of course, everything's better if you treat it with a lot of woolly respect, but yeah, I mean, you can st throw stuff in the laundry and it'll be fine. You know? Right. And so you don't have, when you give it away, you don't have to be like, that's going to be good for the first time they wear it. And then it's going to be this big. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally true. And uh, especially like giving it away or if it's a baby something mm -hmm. um, or whatever else, you really don't know what people are going to be doing mm -hmm. with the project once they have it and everything else. And so it's always great to have a yarn that you know can just get thrown into the wash machine or whatever else. Um, and it's not going to get ruined because that's the last thing you want is mm -hmm. you've spent all this time and everything else. And then to kind of have somebody not know what to do with it, it's kind of yeah. like, oh, this is easy. Just throw it in the wash machine. You're good. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. So I do love that. And the colors, like mm -hmm. they're really great colors together and they're not going to bleed and things like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here we go. Here's a really great thing. Um, so Carrie said, I had a friend who got cancer and she had to do chemo. So I started making prayer shawls. And I think that gives me more of that feeling that Brenda was talking about. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. really great as well. Um, there's so many different things. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up my other screen here that I had. I want to play a little game. <laughs> and those of you who were here the last time we had a designer on uh, for the designer spotlight, you will know we played a little game of this or that. And so I was hoping that you would want to play along with us. So just a couple questions of this or that. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. So the first one, if you had to pick for a vacation, are you going to go to the beach or are you going to go to the mountains? I'm going to go to the mountains, I think. Mountains. Okay, yeah. Very cool. Uh, now, are you going to go to a lake or are you just going to go into the mountains type of thing? I really love camping and being in the, and actually I just drove through the mountains. I drove, I live in Minnesota and my cousin was getting married in Seattle. So my family, we all rented a van and my sister and her kids and me and my kids and my mom all drove all the way to Seattle from Minnesota and back. And so we got to go through the mountains recently and it's just so beautiful there. And I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm making this too long, but no. if there happens to be a lake there, that's awesome. But 
I just like being in the woods and going for hikes and all that mountaininess. Yeah. So people are starting to play along. We've got some people saying beach. Chris is saying, yay, I'm a mountain girl too. So yeah, everybody can have their own little way of doing it. But I mean, I guess you could also stay home, but let's go somewhere. We're, we're, we're dreaming, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you had to pick a treat for yourself or like a special snack or whatever, would you pick something sweet or would you pick something salty? I really like the combination, but if I'm not allowed to choose that, then I would say salty. Salty. Yeah, I, I can get that. I like the combination, like a chocolate covered pretzel or something like that. Uh -huh. Yep. It's really good. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite snack while you're working? Do you have one? Oh, you know, I don't have like a go to snack. I like to change it up, but yeah. I have to say, this is one thing that I don't like that I like is all those you know, Cheetos, Doritos, anything that's wrongly orange and cheese <laughs> flavored. I really like that stuff. So I have to let myself snack for a second and then wash my hands and come to bed. Right. It's not very crochet friendly, the things I like to eat when I'm snacking. But yeah, you know. it's really not, but that's okay. Oh, I like here too, how Chris was saying she was a mountain person, but then said, we usually camped at the beach because it was my mom's favorite. So there you go. Um, oh, Margaret says her favorite uh, treat is bananas while she's working. That's a good one. Cause you know, you're not going to get your hands all dirty uh -huh. uh, and everything else. Okay. So would you prefer a phone call or a text message? Hmm. I mean, it so depends on what, what, if it's just like for someone just to tell me some random thing, text message is easier. But if somebody wants to actually have a conversation with me, I think I'd rather have it over the phone. I'm kind of old. I'm kind of analog like that. I'm kind of old school. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know I, that about me. <laughs> if, it's, if it's something though, like just a quick, like we don't really have to talk text message is good, but yeah, you know, it all yeah. works. Ooh, another treat is chocolate covered bananas. Mm hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. So the last this or that that I've got for you is while you're working on a project, not designing because designing can be different, but if you're just making, uh, I don't know, do you actually get to do that? Or are you always designing? <laughs> Almost <laughs> never, but sometimes I've designed the thing and then I make other versions of it. Like yeah. when I'm testing things, but yeah. I almost am never just making them something without designing it. But yeah. Okay. Let's say hypothetically. Yes. Hypothetically, you're just making. Do you like to watch the TV or are you more of like a podcast ebook listener while you're doing your making? Oh. You know, it depends on what I'm doing because, okay. And then this is me talking about even when I'm just designing a new thing and working on it, I pretty much always have one or the other going on. If it's late enough at night that my kids are in bed, then I'll have Netflix on or or, um, yeah, podcasts about music. <laughs> Ooh, what... about music. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I like that. I, I like podcasts, too. They're easy to listen to while you're working. You don't have to really, like, focus on it. Or I'll listen to an audio book, too. Either one of those um, kind of work out. Sometimes I'll watch TV. It makes it a little harder, though, to focus. Yeah. On the and yeah. So. For me, it's like if I'm working on something that's really tricky, then I will put on Netflix and it has to be a movie I've already seen and something that's a lot of dialogue, not an action movie, not definitely. I have pretty much stopped watching any foreign films because I can't do the subtitles while I'm working, which right. is kind of sad because I used to like those a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm like really choosy about the thing that I'm watching or really kind of not choosy in some ways. I'll just put on things that I only kind of sort of like, but it's like, right. you just know, enough for me to keep me awake and working on something, but not enough to distract me. But if I'm working on something where I'm like, okay, now I have to like make the rest of the sweater and I already know what I'm doing. Da, 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 right. I just have to finish it up. Um, then I'll put on something that's that I haven't seen before or listen to a podcast. I have found that if I put podcasts on and I'm working on something that's tricky, then I have absolutely no idea what I was even listening to. And there's no point in me right. even playing it at all. So right. <laughs> then you've just got to watch it or listen to it again. Did I even listen to that? I don't I don't even remember listening to that. But it looks yeah. like I listen to it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, I like this one that says they prefer text. I've got loud kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, another snack is frozen grapes. 
Ooh, that's a good uh-huh. one. That is I good. I love frozen grapes. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> Carrie says, definitely don't watch a movie that you haven't seen before. Uh, that's very true. And as uh, Margaret is watching TV, she likes to watch TV lately, Criminal Minds, but mm-hmm. have to wait until the kids go to bed. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, I like this one. Carrie says they'll put on, she'll put on a movie her husband wants to watch, but she's like, eh, and then she doesn't have to watch it. Like she's there, <laughs> but not really watching all this. Stuff that going is on. that <laughs> is something that happens at our house. Yeah, because my husband will pick out things that I don't particularly. I mean, I don't mind watching, but it's not right. something that I would pick out. Especially like he likes a lot of horror movies and stuff like that. So um, it's helpful for me to be working on my projects because then yeah. I can just be like, not. Nah, watching that part whatever that noise is I don't want to know yeah yeah um okay so before we wrap it up here I do want to say we're going to do a giveaway today so we're going to put the link to the google form into the chat here and what you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and fill out the form and it's going to ask you for like a special word I think it is or a code or I, I forget what we called it um but what you're going to put in there is you're going to put Brenda, because she is our featured designer. So just put Brenda right in there and that'll be your ticket, so to speak, or say that you watched it and this is the giveaway you want to win. And what we're going to do is we're going to give away the yarn to make Brenda's brand new hat. So click on the link. It'll take you to a Google form, fill out your information and uh, make sure you use the code word Brenda. So we know this is the giveaway that you want to win as we go to pick out the winner. So thank you so much, Brenda, for joining us. It was so great getting to chat with you and share. Uh, There are so many patterns of Brenda's over on our site. I think Jen already put the link in, uh, but we'll make sure it gets in the descriptions of Brenda's spotlight page uh, that has all the patterns she's done for us. And you guys are just going to fall in love. There's a bunch of free ones that Brenda has there too. So you can grab, there's some in the Swish uh, yarn family. So make sure you grab that today Um, over on the website, on the homepage or through emails, you'll get a special code that gives you an additional 10% off Swish today only. Only good today, midnight tonight, turns off, no more. So if you were waiting for Swish, get it now because you'll get an additional 10% off the sale price going on right now. So thank you guys so much. We will be back here again next Wednesday to chat with you about something really fun that we've got launching. Thank you again, Brenda, for sharing with us. We will be in touch for some more projects coming up because we just, you're not getting away from us. Sorry. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Have a great day, everybody.